Hello folks, um, I'm going to do a little bit of painting outside. I'm going to run through how to paint trees. Um, lots of my sketchbook club modules use trees and shrubs paintings and I thought it would be really good to show you some of my techniques. So we're having a bit of a heat wave today. So um, we've made a little outdoor room underneath the apple tree um, and I'm going to um, show you how to paint trees here whilst looking at the trees. So first of all I'm going to run through everything you need um, and the first thing you'll need um, heavyweight cartridge paper. Um, this is really lovely paper because it's nice and thick and it can um, it can withstand lots of lovely watercolours. Um, this is the same paper incidentally that I use in my sketchbooks um, and I sell them on my website. You will also need um, your size 1 and um, your size 6 paint brushes. Um, paint brushes are a minefield and they're so confusing. You go into an art shop and there's like a million of them and they're so expensive. These are my favourites. They're synthetic um, and really easy to use with lovely points um, and they're nice and cheap. They're on my website too. And you'll also need some watercolours. These are lovely and new um, and they're discs so you kind of undo them and um, they've got four layers. Mine, not so new, but um, I really encourage using the watercolours um, as a sort of palette. Don't be um, scared to just mix within the colours. So if you're going to make a nice aqua, just stuff your paintbrush in the blue and mix it in the green. It's fine. Run them under hot water and they, they clean nicely. Okay, ready to start. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is um, you're going to make a really nice brown. Now remember what I said about mixing. Honestly fine. Just um, add some black to your brown, dip it in so that it's not too um, pure. That's what's nice about watercolours is you can make some really subtle colours. Um, I very rarely use this unless I'm making a sort of wash. Okay, so the first thing to do if you're going to paint a tree um, is to just uh, draw in the shape of the, so I'm looking at trees but you don't have to, you could just look at some lovely um, photos of trees on the internet or um, or just make up your own um, but I find it really useful to have some reference so it's entirely up to you. So don't worry too much, this is just going to be visible through the green so honestly you're just kind of making a sort of skeleton that will be visible through the lovely foliage. Okay, so we have our tree and then you're going to wait for that to dry a little. I don't have to wait that long because I'm outside and it's boiling um, in this crazy heat wave. So now using your larger brush you're going to um, get your green and your yellows and you're going to mix the green um, Look, you can see what I mean. I mean, I literally use them like a palette. It's quite nice because then they have a sort of memory. So you can see I really like this gorgeous green in here. It's really subtle, um, which I obviously mixed a while ago <laughs> and I'm just reusing it. So make sure it's really wet. You want it really, really, really wet. That's important. And then you're just going to create a watery wash over, over your... Um, skeletal branches. Don't worry if it kind of blends a little, that's completely fine too. And then with this as well, you might like to add a little ground just to kind of give your tree um, some, some sort of um, base, make it feel a bit more secure. Now you have to wait for that to dry. So whilst we're waiting that for dry, I'm going to do something the other way around. So this time, going back to my dark colours, I'm going to use some really, really, really dark green and I'm going to put a little bit of black in there, okay? And I'm going to make some kind of shrubs down here. It's quite nice if they kind of blend into that um, watery base, it's fine. And you're just going to kind of make any old shapes, really. Now, if you've got, if you've um, tried the front garden module, this is a really good way of making those um, kind of formal gardens. We had like little pivots and um, little box hedges and things. Um, so again, waiting for that to dry. Um, I'm going to do another tree here just so that you can 
um, see some other different techniques. So I'm going to do some formal like pencil pines, which always remind me of kind of Italy or National Trust houses. <laughs> and so again, we're literally we're just making the base. It's just a base, so there's nothing to worry about. And it's just about shapes at the moment. Okay, so now waiting game. You have to wait for that to dry. Um, so I'm gonna twiddle my thumb for a bit and then it'll be dry in a second. Righty-ho, I can see that the main tree is nice and dry. So um, I'm gonna start um, adding my little dots. It's such a simple technique, but it is so effective and really easy, super easy, which is the whole point of Sketchbook Club is, is that it's easy and it's stress-free because there's nothing worse than um, creating something um, and you don't like it. I disagree with this whole theory that it doesn't matter, that it doesn't look lovely. It's about the enjoyment. Um, to me, that's a bit like saying, um, oh, it really doesn't matter, you know, whether it tastes nice, your food. Did you like making it? Doesn't That doesn't really work for me. I think I kind of want to love it. I want to finish a piece of work and think, oh gosh, that's, I can't believe I've done that. I love that. I can't wait to show it to people. Um, so Sketchbook Club is all about making sure, <laughs> making sure you love it, making sure you feel really proud of it. Okay, so you're just literally dotting around um, and creating that kind of, um, I guess it's like a sort of, you know, this sort of silver birch where they have lots of tiny little leaves and they kind of shimmer in the wind. So we're kind of after that sort of look and feel. Um, you're going to add other colours as well, so don't worry, you're literally just creating a little bit of texture and a little bit of movement in the painting, but it's starting to look much more tree-like um, and you can kind of, you can imagine how it's going to be when you add some lighter tones and some darker tones. Okay, so I feel like I'm just about to finish on the, that green. And then we're going to go back to these trees. So remember the pencil pines? Um, well, when I say remember, I've had like 10 minute break because it was drying. It was like a second ago, wasn't it? So <laughs> I'm sure you remember them. So we're literally, we're just going to add a little line here because these are much more formal. So they just, once they're dry, it'll take really well. So again, I'm adding a little black to the green and it's just a kind of um, definition and shadow. And it's like, that's fine, that's really effective. Um, you can make the shadow a little bit darker at the base if you wanted to, um, but that is um, more than enough to kind of give them definition. So now um, we're gonna do the dotting method again on these trees um, and bushes, but we're gonna go in with a much darker and then later we're gonna add a lighter tone. Um, and we are gonna add a few um, sort of grasses at the very base, but again, um, it's a case of waiting for things to dry. Um, I'm really bad at waiting for things to dry. And my, my only tip is to go and do something else. Don't sit there looking at it and touching it. It's like literally go and have a cup of tea or something because it's, uh, it's near on impossible, I think. To, it, to, it's like watching a, a phone and waiting for it to ring. It's like it won't, it just something weird happens. It doesn't, it doesn't dry as fast. <laughs> oh, um, yes, cup of tea, cold drink, um, loo break, anything just to kind of... <laughs> Um, make sure that when you come back it is dry because if it isn't you don't get this kind of um, nice um, base to work on really you're really, want, you're really wanting a nice kind of dry base in which the paint will um, adhere to really nicely and it's interesting because these watercolours um, I think in all honesty and I'm not just saying this um, are better than the kind of super expensive ones that I've tried they have a much deeper pigment and they're not so grainy and I don't know why that is but um, they um, they just seem to kind of have more strength of color which I'm really happy about so um, if you have other ones then maybe you might need a little bit more mixing with a brush to get more of the more of the pigment um, whilst you're there, whilst you're there and you have your black, you might and you you might want to add a bit of a kind of a definition to the trunk as well, just to kind of make it feel like a, 
a, a tree that has some light on it. Okay, so back to that tree. I'm going to go in with a darker green now um, and just kind of give it a little bit more definition now that that mid green is dry. Um, it's very peaceful to do and relaxing and actually nice for children because it's a technique which isn't um, it doesn't involve kind of crazy dexterity and it's just as I said really quite relaxing to do a little bit more as I've got my green on there okay so um, I'm now going to um, use some um, gouache uh, so I've got um, just some normal white gouache and I'm going to just squirt it in here like I always do terrible with them um, you, you can I mean I do use a big palette for gouache but with the watercolors as I said I quite like the memory of other colors I've created um, so yeah now I've got a really nice white and you can add a little bit of highlight to some of these trees It just makes them sort of come alive a little bit. My brush has got all gooey. And then you can add some lighter dots to the trees. You can mix in a bit of green. And it just means that they start to suddenly become quite sort of three dimensional. And there's probably a million ways to draw um, trees and bushes but um, I've always used this and especially in my kind of sketchbooks when I'm out painting I just find it um, a good way of making it quite sort of foolproof like they always look like they always look like trees if you know what I mean because that's what you want you don't want people to look at your painting and go that's really nice but what is it and you want it to be recognizable so that you feel again like you you're proud of it and that people know you know they can recognize it so you might want to do a few dots on here as well just to kind of give them that sort of realistic leaves shimmering in the sunlight um, and then wherever it's really light on your big tree some little white dots just mean that it really does look like they sort of you can kind of hear the leaves moving around in the wind We have lots and lots of garden birds here. Can you hear them tweeting in the background? So you can go back as well with some much more sort of pure white right, if you want to kind of really highlight some of these bushes. And then I did say that we were going to add some grass. So I'm going to make this. Um, look at my fingers, I'm such a messy painter. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that when I'm decorating a room, I get more paint on myself than the room. I'm not very neat at all. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some quite sort of yellow, um, keeping it green. I mean, look how messy mine are. It really doesn't matter. And I, what I do is I just shove them under the hot tap afterwards with a bit of a scrubbing brush. Um, so I'm just going to add a few little wisps of grass here just to kind of give it a bit of a definition with a little line as if we're as if we're looking out over a lawn i quite like a base for things as well so the size one brush um, is all you need um, it, it it has a really nice point and i think my tip is as long as you can see a really nice point then you know there's a definite edge uh, and a definite kind of nice pointy end to your little blades of grass i mean that's that's how you can tell if your if your paint's getting a bit cloggy you might want to add some water and, and make it less so but as long as you can see a really nice point on your brush then you know it's it's going to work okay so i'm happy with that um, and i think it kind of shows that kind of whole trees and bushes um, which I'm after so yeah I will um, 
I will leave that to dry and then maybe add a little colour pencil later which I'm quite prone to or I might just leave it at that but hopefully that um, is enough for you to go on for now just to kind of you know create those trees in your images um, and especially some of the sketchbook club modules which have lots of trees and foliage in so um, I'll tag below all the products and also the modules that this will help with and I will see you later bye mm -hmm.